The Theory of Rings. This is by Neil H. McCoy. Let's take a, a look at this book here. See what is expected. He's the Gates Professor of Mathematics at Smith College. And copyright 1964. This is the fourth printing from 67 to my wife, Artis. Hmm. Okay. So it says here, although comparatively little knowledge of the actual content of abstract algebra is assumed as background, this little book is designed for students who have had at least an introductory course in the methods and concepts of that subject. Right. It is hoped that part of the material here presented will be suitable for use with graduate or advanced undergraduate students as a supplement to that portion of ring theory which is introduced in the usual course in abstract algebra. Okay, cool. It can also be used um, as a primary text for a full course, right. Yeah, so there's a lot of material here. So examples and fundamental properties of rings, uh, ideals and homomorphisms, subdirect sums of rings. It's cool, right? Look at this. Prime ideals and the prime radical, semi-prime ideals, prime rings. The descending chain condition and the prime radical, and endomorphisms and linear transformations, R modules and rings of endomorphisms, the Wedderburn Artin theorem, the Jacobson radical, chapter six. So let's let's go to the beginning, which and oh some additional topics. What's this? Item potents and regular elements of dense rings. Okay, so let's go to the beginning. The beginning was uh, page one. All right, so let's just see what we have there. So you can see, you know, how this book is laid out. Uh, oh, and I, I didn't see anything about um, answers or anything, right, to exercises. Uh, and are there even exercises? So let's, let's just look. Yeah, there are exercises. Right, but I don't see answers. I don't think there's going to be any answers uh, to any of the exercises. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't appear that way. Hmm. So that is uh, unfortunate. But it'd be cool to try to work a bunch of these out. So let's go to the very beginning just to see how it starts. It says, in this chapter... We shall give a number of basic definitions, state several fundamental properties, and give a few examples of rings. Okay. All right. And then here it talks more about rings. Let R be a non-empty set on which there are defined two binary operations called addition and multiplication, and for which we use the familiar notation. Right. So plus and times. The ring, then R is a ring, provided the following properties hold. A, B, and C are arbitrary and distinct or identical of R. Yep. So these properties must hold. So you have to have commutative law of addition, associative law of addition, the existence of zero, the existence of inverses, additive inverses. So you have an identity element on addition. That's what that's called. Okay. And um, every element has an inverse additively, and then you have associativity through multiplication, and then distributivity. Distributivity is important if you think about it, right? It's really what connects those two operations, right? Addition and multiplication. It's that distributive law. Also, notice that um, there's no requirement here for uh, there to be an identity uh, when we're thinking of multiplication or, you know, a, a multiplicative inverse. It's not a requirement at all. Uh, in the definition of a ring. So um, you don't have all the familiar properties you might have with certain uh, algebraic structures. So it's pretty cool, right? It just keeps going. And you can keep learning. What's it say here? The first four of these defining properties of a ring are just the defining properties of an abelian group, yes. 
or with respect to the operation of addition. Correct. This Boolean group may be called the additive group of the ring R. Yep. Familiar properties of groups or of rings show that the zero of a ring is unique. Yes. And that each element A of R has a unique additive inverse. Yep. That's true. So all good stuff. It goes pretty quickly. So if you've never seen this, perhaps, it might be like, whoa. But I think this is a very, very good book. Um, you can learn a lot of information in a short amount of time because there's just like a lot of knowledge here. And it's just like this, yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. Some nice definitions here. No potent, right? No potent elements. All kinds of stuff. Item potent, you can find item potent elements. Yeah, it is, it is a shame that there are a lot of exercises, right? There's, there's quite a few, quite a few exercises, but uh, I, I don't see, maybe there's an answer book. I, I don't know. This is, um, I don't know how, I don't even know how available this book is. Um, if, if I can find any copies of this book, I'll, I'll leave a, a link in the description. But I think this is a pretty cool book. Sums and direct sums of ideals. What's this? In this section, we shall define and discuss the operation of addition on the sets of ideals. Okay, right ideals in a ring R. Okay, so if we have two ideals in a ring R, we define their sum this way. Okay, and it follows easily that the sum is an ideal. Right ideal in R, yep. Mm-hmm. More over any idea, right? Some proofs. Yeah, it's a nice little book here. Nice little book. I actually started to um, make a course on um, like ring theory a long time ago, and I just I just never finished it. And it's it started, but it needs, um, it needs more content to be like a course, but it's got some intro material and it's pretty good, but it needs, it needs more, uh, more stuff. But um, yeah, I do have a course uh, on just regular abstract algebra, which um, it's mostly basically group theory is the course. And uh, it's on my website, mathsorcerer.com. So yeah, check it out there. But interesting book, interesting book. I, I think that this is uh, one of the good ones. Theory of Rings uh, by Neil H. McCoy. So kind of a old book here I wanted to show you. Anyways, until next time, keep doing mathematics.